Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those who may be new here, my name is Alexandra Templeton and I am a group fitness instructor and yoga teacher currently based in Brussels, Belgium. And in today's video, we're going to be going over what I consider to be eight really good parts and not so great parts about living in the Belgian capital. On y va! Okay, quick disclaimer before we begin. I really like living in Brussels. I know it may not be the city for everybody, but I've really enjoyed my time here and have been here for almost three years now. So the eight things that I'm going to mention in today's video are mostly positive because I want to paint the city in a positive light. Though I do think it's fair to give some of the, or to show some of the less flattering parts of living here, just so that you have a balanced perception so that if you decide to visit or also move here, you know what you're getting into. Okay, so with that being said, we're gonna start this list off with the five best things I consider about living here. The first thing I think is really cool is that Brussels is what I call a small, big city. With about 180 nations represented here and about 19 communes, there's really a flavor for anybody. So you have this wonderful blend of cultures, of cuisines and languages all within this relatively compact area. This is extra cool because it's also pretty easy to navigate from one part of the city to the next, as it's, as I said, relatively condensed geographically as compared to its other European counterparts like Paris or Rome or Madrid. Actually, one of my girlfriends and fellow Brazilians put it best that you may not fit in here, but you definitely won't stand out. There's really every kind of person represented here. Okay, my second plus about living in Brussels is that there are so many languages represented. And this may only be appealing to fellow language nuts out there, but I think this is really, really cool. That within the span of about five minutes walking down the streets here, you can hear dozens of foreign languages. In fact, there are over 105 foreign languages spoken just within this small capital region. And as a personal aside, this is my favorite part of living in Brussels because I studied foreign languages at university, that was actually my major, was Spanish and Portuguese. And before moving here, I lived in Prague, Czech Republic, where I made great effort to learn Czech language. And when we decided, when my boyfriend and I decided to move here, I didn't think that I was going to have much opportunity to speak it, even though he is Czech. But that's actually been quite the opposite, that we found quite a large Czech community here and that happens to be the case for many, many languages. As I said, there are over 105 languages spoken here. So whether you are interested in learning one as a hobby or just as a personal development thing, or you need to learn one for work, I'm sure that there will be someone or some institution that can help you pick up any foreign language you desire here. Number three on my list today is that Brussels has a thriving cultural scene. So as it's the hub of the European Union, there's a lot of draw for international talent. So whether European politics is your jam, or maybe music, or art, there's always something really cool happening here. And it's not just events that indulge your sense of sight or hearing, but there are also a lot of events surrounding gastronomy and, of course, beer. Brussels showcases kind of the best of Belgium's indulgent rich foods, such as beer, waffles, fries, and chocolate, which makes my job as a personal trainer great because it means that there's always work. Um, but as Brussels is the capital of Belgium, it means that you kind of get this draw of the best of those kinds of events, of the events that surround those foods, showcasing the best the country has to offer. And the last pro I have to living here is that there is ample green space. There are a lot of beautiful parks throughout the city here in which you can just stop to take a breath and escape some of the hustle and bustle of the city. A few of my favorites are Parc Royal, also known as Brussels Park, Parc Cinquentenaire, and Leopold Park. Additionally, Brussels is also bordered by the national park, Parc Ardennes, which is perfect for a day hike or a quick little romantic weekend getaway. And pro number five, rounding out the nice list of positives in Brussels, has to do with public transportation. And this may be my American coming out, where many cities in the US are lacking in public transportation, but here in Brussels I found it to be fabulous. That there is a combination of metro, trams, buses, it's clean, it's affordable, and it reaches almost every corner of the city, which is awesome. Now it's time for the less good parts about living here. And up first, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, is the weather. It's less than ideal. Now viewer, you may be thinking, but Ali, look around you. The day that you're filming this is beautiful. It's sunny, it looks like there are blue skies. It appears to be quite warm. 
Indeed, dear viewer, it is. I am filming this video mid-June, and as I said, I like living in Brussels, so I'm going to try my best in this video to paint it in a positive light. But spring and summer here are quite different <laughs> to fall and winter. So much so, in fact, that I feel, it's been my experience and those that I speak with, that there's this kind of collective amnesia that takes place. Because spring and summer here are so gorgeous, the days are long, it's warm, there are beer gardens, there's so many things happening that we kind of all forget what happens in the fall and winter when the days are dark and cloudy and cold and humid. And you really just want to get the out of the city. <laughs> So if it weren't for the months of maybe May to end of September, where things are just so exceptionally gorgeous, I don't know if I would have a very good time managing to live here. So if you haven't been to Brussels and you do want to see the city, I would highly recommend going in between that time frame when the city is at its best. The beer gardens are open, there are outdoor exhibitions, sun is shining, days are super long, and you can really experience Brussels in its best light. Con number two is that they're always doing construction somewhere in the city. This not only makes it a nightmare to drive and park here, but the noise is also super annoying. And you never know which streets are going to be open. The last con of today's list has to do with food and cost of living in Brussels. Things here are expensive, and I know that all is relative, this is going to depend entirely on your lifestyle, but I found that whether you eat out or at home, food is particularly expensive. And this is something I touched on a bit more in depth in my Moving to Brussels video, so if you'd like to hear a little bit more about lifestyle and the price of recreational activities and rent, then I will leave that linked in the description box below for you. Now this point has to do with the price of food specifically, and I tried to find online an estimate of how much people spend on food each month here in the city, though it was kind of difficult because a lot of the estimates were around monthly expenses in general, which include things like cost of transportation, uh, rent, other lifestyle factors, you know, hobby, sports, those things. Though from my research and from my personal experience, I would say that food out in a restaurant, each plate ranges from, you know, 15 to 25 euros. Uh, that's just per plate, excluding things like drinks or multiple courses. So going out to eat can be a uh, fairly pricey endeavor. Now don't get me wrong, food is one of the best experiences we have as people on this earth, um, but you may just need to be a little bit discerning of where you spend your money. And um, I will leave a few of my favorite places down in the description box below. Not sponsored, though if uh, they're looking for sponsors, um, I'm open. <laughs> Okay, and that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any more questions on Brussels or Belgium, just make sure to leave them in the comments down below, and I will try my best to answer them, though I'm sure that there's also someone else out here on the internet who will be very capable to answer them. And if you find yourself in the Belgian capital and would like to work up a sweat and move your beautiful body, I will leave my in-person teaching schedule in the description box below. I currently work at a wonderful studio here called Animo Studios near Flage, where I teach a combination of power yoga and cross-training classes, though the studio also offers a wide range of classes, including things like spinning, bar, pilates, so I'm sure that you're bound to find at least one thing there that suits you. And all of my online programs will also be linked in the description box below, so even if you can't make it to Brussels, we can still practice together virtually. And so with that, I bid you all adieu, wishing you a beautiful rest of your day, and I will see you back here for my next video very, very soon. Ciao, guys.